the biggest obstacle that you're going to have as a self-taught web developer when trying to become a software engineer is this. It's not what you learn and it's not what you think. Obviously, you need to learn how to code and you have to be able to build things by yourself. Obviously, you need to have a portfolio, obviously, but that's not the biggest obstacle. The biggest obstacle is going from doing tutorials, building a portfolio, and then trying to get a job. Your biggest obstacle is the fact that the hardest part is getting your first job. Let me repeat that. It's getting your first job. There's plenty of videos online that tell you the biggest obstacle is you don't know how to think like a developer or because you're self-taught. No, the hardest thing for you that you will have to fight through is getting your first job. And that's exactly the issue I had. And I'm telling you this right now because I want you guys to know the truth. Now, if you're lucky, if you have a lot of friends who already work in the industry and you have a lot of connections, it'll literally be all about who you know. Because if someone refers you, a friend of yours who works at a company and he convinces somebody to give you a chance, you'll be able to do it. It's true. Maybe if you have an amazing portfolio, you'll be able to get hired. And that does work. But don't let me sugarcoat it and tell you that the biggest obstacle in your way to get a job is actually getting your first job. And if you don't believe me, ask anybody who's been coding on their own and who started job searching. They'll tell you that it's the hardest thing to do. Number one, you're gonna try to send out your resume. You're probably gonna do a shotgun approach where you're just gonna blast a bunch of resumes to a bunch of people and you're gonna get ghosted. Why? Because that's exactly what happened to me. Number two, you're going to start reaching out to recruiters. You're going to be like, hey, this is my portfolio, check this out. And again, you're gonna get ghosted. How do I know this? Because that is what happened to me. You're going to write your first resume. You're gonna send out that resume. It's not going to work. How do I know this? because it happened to me. You're going to ask your friends who could vouch for you. And believe it or not, some of your friends will be like, hey, they don't trust enough in your ability to recommend you to their boss because they don't want to get embarrassed by recommending someone who doesn't know what they're doing. And the truth is, your biggest obstacle to getting your job is getting your first job. And some of you guys might be being like, Paul, you're being so negative, but I just want to prepare you guys that it's not impossible because I did it. I know a couple of other people that did it in my personal life who started with nothing, learned the skill, built their portfolio and hustled, made connections, got out there and got the job. Now that you know the biggest obstacle is getting your first job. So how do you fight that? And the truth is there is no cookie cutter approach. There are things that you will have to do and you'll have to test and try and see what works. With that being said, let me tell you what worked for me. Number one, you definitely have to learn the skill. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know how to code. In a most basic sense, you should be able to create a simple website on your own without really following a tutorial. You should sit down and code it yourself. And if you do get stuck, of course, can look stuff up on Google or Stack Overflow, but in general, you should know what to do. Number two, you need to make sure that you have at least two or three projects in your portfolio that you could showcase to somebody and you could talk about them with confidence because you know what the code under the hood does. Very important for you to be able to clearly communicate what you did and why you did it. Number three, if you don't have a LinkedIn, you got to set one up. If you don't have a GitHub where you have history of the stuff that you've been committing, that you've been building, even if it's learning, you got to set that up. And if you don't have a basic portfolio, it doesn't even have to have any projects in, but if you don't have a website that you could kind of point people to where it has your name, points to your GitHub, points to your LinkedIn, and maybe has a couple of your portfolio projects, you got to set that up. Next, you got to market yourself. So with all the friends that you have, you got to find out who works where and you got to be like, hey, can you set me up with an interview at your company? You got to proactively ask people because nobody's going to offer that to you. You got to make sure that you're asking your circle that you know of friends that work in companies that will refer you. And if they don't feel the confidence to refer you, you got to find out why. Is it because they don't 
have the confidence in your skill to recommend you to their boss. If you don't have friends like that, you got to start making friends in the community. You got to start growing your network on LinkedIn, going to meetups, whatever you can do. You have to really get out there because companies will take a chance on you, but only if you're actively looking for the opportunity. To be honest with you, and again, I don't want to make this, you know, Debbie Downer type of video where we're all going to be upset because there's definitely things you could do, but this is the biggest obstacle is going from doing tutorials to being able to get your first job. And it was really hard for me. I ended up doing all the things that I mentioned. I started blogging. I started posting videos on YouTube. And this is why you see it here, because I wanted to get myself out there and network, network, network. So if this video is making you really upset, it's okay. Because the truth is it takes hard work to break into the field, especially if you are self-taught. And before I go, what I'm going to tell you, I'm not making this video to discourage you. I'm making this video to let you know that be ready to do the work. And if you need help, you could always reach out to me and or follow, subscribe to this channel and see what I talk about and what I did to get hired because I know you can do it. But please don't just think that learning to code is enough because at the end of the day, if nobody knows who you are, how are they supposed to hire you? So anyway, I want to make this, you know, truth hurt video. At least that has been my experience of course you're more than welcome to argue with me and let me know in the comments or better yet if you have something that worked for you best share it with everybody in the community in the comments so we could all learn from it anyway thanks for watching by the way if you like what i do on this channel consider subscribing i talk about what it was like for me switching careers and then when i finally got my job what did i have to do to keep the job anyway lots of love to you guys and i'll see you guys later this is Paul from Not Too Distant Future announcement. By the way, if you're not on Coding Addicts channel on every Monday, 8 p.m. Pacific time, you're missing out on the best podcast that will answer a lot of these questions. Okay, now we're going back to your regular time.